Starfield is the latest Bethesda title after the really crappy Fallout 76. Another overhyped mess that I unfortunately fell for, but honestly I think it's gotten a little better now. After my experience with 76 at launch and the whole cyberpunk dilemma, I decided to stay away from any marketing videos and hype because I just really can't trust this man. I did however hear that the game is basically Skyrim in space, and being the sucker I am who has bought Skyrim at least three times, I'll admit I mean I got a little hype for this one. I'll give some context first, I'm way too small for review copies, I tried, couldn't get one, paid the extra $30 on top of Game Pass subscription just to play this game early. I also played this one on PC, Steam Deck, and Xbox. I've got almost 60 hours in the game so far, I've completed some side quests and all of the faction quest lines, and I even started a new game plus which I really just couldn't resist thanks to the twist. I won't be talking any story spoilers so if you're interested in the game, you have no worries at all. There's not going to be any spoilers in the video as well just as a heads up. One of the first things that I wanted to cover was the release date of the game. Starfield was supposed to come out September 6th for poor people. If you weren't going to shell out $100 or pay that $30 extra upgrade on top of Game Pass, you had to wait longer. I paid because I had some time off at work thanks to Memorial Day, and I just wanted to get my content out sooner, even though this took, this took a really long time to get out. This is completely unrelated to the game, but just so many developers have been swinging this crap and I just really think it needs to stop. We've gone from pre-order bonuses, special editions, and now it's early access. It honestly really sucks for people because the game should have just released five days earlier. Locking early access behind a $100 edition is this new scummy thing to do, and honestly, I don't think I'm ever going to support this again. The only benefit that I'm getting right now with that 30 that I paid extra is at least some access to the already planned future DLC. But other than that, I basically paid for early access. I wanted to talk storyline first because Bethesda games normally have a decent story, but way better side content. For me, the story at first doesn't grab you at all. Once you get through that really good character creator, that's super in depth by the way. You choose your skills, you choose a background, and you get dropped into a, just a normal day at work as a miner. The intro to the game is so slow to the point that people are out saying you can't judge the game in the first three hours, which I agree, honestly. You need at least 10 hours to judge the game. Oh, you played it for 50 hours? No, the game doesn't even start till hour 60, come on. The moving of the goalposts when it comes to this game is crazy, and just like how other games have slow, boring intros, Zelda, Pokemon, I mean, those games are still good, at least to me. I'll have to admit, Starfield's minor job intro only kinda sparks your curiosity on where the story's going. It doesn't do much. You end up finding an artifact, you touch it, you pass out, and you end up on a quest to find the rest with this group named Constellation, who wants to explore space. Up until the end, that's really the game. You're collecting artifacts. I honestly did two main story missions, found some factions, and just went through factions and side quests because they were honestly a lot more interesting. It's something that I do in most Bethesda games. I mean, I'll join the Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild and the Fighters Guild bef before I've even fought my first dragon, so. I do feel like Skyrim's intro, speaking of Skyrim and where the whole story was going, I would say even Fallout 3, a little bit of Fallout 4. I mean, they're at least introducing you to an awesome new world that you're about to get sucked into. And you do have a little bit of enticement to move forward in that whole narrative. The story does take a twist later on, but I honestly wish that twist happened a lot sooner because once it happened, I was hooked and just doing main mission after main mission and kept playing until the end of the game. What I normally do in games like this is I get to an area, I check the map, and I just knock out all the side quests and missions before going on to the story. I eventually do feel a little guilty for ignoring, you know, whatever huge task I have and I'll move on to story content. But when it comes to this game, I really just didn't have that itch at all. I also feel like the monotony of the main quest starts to really just take a toll on you, especially after you do a bunch of side missions and factions. Faction quest lines are interesting to an extent, but most really just have you fast traveling somewhere and talking to someone, or finding an item and bringing it back. 
the most unique one, at least from like a writing perspective, was the Ryujin one, where you do corporate espionage. But with that one, stealth, at least with my character, was just not working for me at all. I didn't put any level up points into stealth, so I didn't have any of the bonuses. I didn't have the chameleon invisibility suit because I sold it early for credits, even though I didn't need the credits later. Stealth just felt really bad and broken, unlike stealth in previous Bethesda games. Even when I was caught, I was able to weirdly persuade my way out, which came to some weird one-liners like, maybe you should look the other way, and somehow the guard decided to. If I had to rank my faction quest lines, I enjoyed Ryujin the most, despite the whole stealth issue, the Crimson Fleet second, then you've got the UC Vanguard third, and then the Ranger faction the least. Moving away from quests, I did want to talk some gameplay. Is the gameplay in Starfield fun? Sometimes it's a blast, especially when you get into it and the game gets going. There's a lot of systems in the game, which is a huge achievement, but I really just feel like most systems are half-baked and incomplete. It does a lot, but it doesn't do anything necessarily really well. One of the first things I want to highlight is gunplay. The guns at first feel honestly really good. You get interesting weapons as you continue the game, but sadly what ruins just the gunfights in general is the AI. I mean, don't get me wrong, when you're shooting, you have a lot of fun just killing people left and right, especially when you get to some alien bugs here and there. And then you max out your jetpack and you're just floating around just shooting at people. But having brain dead AI that hasn't changed since Skyrim in 2023 really just doesn't work. The game on normal felt ridiculously easy to me. Your companion runs around, they get stuck in places, and really just gets in the way as well. The AI just sit there for you to basically come up and kill them, and the most life that they'll actually show is them retreating and sprinting their way out. But I mean, at, at first, honestly, it looked like a bug, but they were just retreating really, really fast. On a positive note, Bethesda nailed the FPS aspect here, I think this is the best sounding and best feeling shooting that they've ever had in one of their games. Speaking of bugs, there is a little bit in the game, but I mean overall it feels a lot more polished at least to me than previous Bethesda titles. There was nothing game breaking for me. I did have some weird physics here and there, popping eyeballs, a notice that I was trespassing that just didn't go away for a couple hours, but nothing game breaking. I think I had one crash on PC. And I did have this weird bug in the beginning where audio wasn't syncing up and all of that was fixed by installing it on my internal SSD, not my, you know, second SSD that I've got on my computer. Like I mentioned earlier, I played this one on PC, Steam Deck through cloud streaming, and on Xbox. Xbox felt great even at 30 FPS, but I mean, I'm used to consoles. PC on a 3080 and 4K honestly struggled a little bit, and I had to make some tweaks, but I think that'll get a lot better when DLSS is out officially. Speaking of official patches and updates, I didn't mod the game at all because I just want to experience what the developers created. Besides the shooting gameplay, the game has space combat which ended up being my favorite. You get this free crappy ship in the beginning, but you can go into the ship builder and make some really cool stuff. I messed around with the ship builder, and I've seen some crazy creations online that I'm eventually going to copy, because sadly I'm not that creative on my own. I'll eventually give it a shot, but I mean, just as a heads up, the creator feels a lot better on PC. For some reason, controller was giving me weird motion sickness, especially when you're just moving the parts around. It just felt off. I earned a ship through a quest line, by the way, that made combat 10 times better, and I highly recommend you do that quest line for the Rangers, just so that you can get that ship early. Going into space at first is awesome. Space is completely random. You've got either metal ship pieces, random asteroids, random encounters with pirates, Sometimes the UC Vanguard is taking on pirates and you can help out. There were school kids that were stuck that need parts. I mean, there was someone that tried to sell you ship insurance. and It's funny. It's awesome. I love these random encounters and I got into some really good ones. Hopping system to system has honestly that one benefit. You don't know what you're going to get. In space, you're basically moving forward and you can get to Pluto in eight hours. But besides the encounters and fights, the entire point of space is to just pull up the planet map and pick a place to land. You can land anywhere on a planet and you'll basically get a random procedurally generated area, or you can land on one of the predetermined spots that 
basically the developers have designed. At first, I randomly landed on a spot and I explored. I had no idea what I was looking for until I pulled out my scanner and I saw those question marks. And in typical Bethesda game fashion, I booked it for the question marks, fought bugs along the way, found a cave, found a lab, took out some pirates, was able to get some cool guns. What sucks here though, is I had to run the entire way there, which got really tedious really fast. I don't get why there's no kinds of vehicles in this game or mounts or something. Uh, even just being able to fly your ship just a little closer would have been cool. Two, the random generation isn't like Remnant 2. I mean, it, I think it's a little more Diablo. Once you land on a few planets and you do this, you're basically going to see the same exact thing again and again. Here and there, you get a pirate ship land, you could steal it. But for exploration, I mean, that's really it. It's pretty shallow and honestly, most people are going to ignore it unless you're a settlement person from Fallout 4. Speaking of settlements, that's back too. You can assign crew there, you mine resources, and just have full-on settlements on any planet or moon you'd like. This is something I always thought was a cool idea, but again, I suck at stuff like this, so I stayed away. The game also doesn't even force you to do this because you could buy resources. And it's not like you need the helium for fuel. You basically can just travel system to system and your ship will magically refuel during the whole loading screen. For any fans of Settlement though, I mean, this thing is awesome, it's in-depth, it's just like Fallout 4. You're able to connect these settlements planet to planet and you're able to do some crazy things. It's another system to explore in a game that's honestly just full of different content and systems. Content also is where this game truly shines. You have an in-depth character creator, you can hire crew members, you can create bases and assign them there on any planet, Create your own ship, become a space pirate double agent, help shopkeepers that get harassed by gangs, and solve the mysteries of the universe. The game is jam-packed with things to do, and I can see how so many people get sucked in and are just putting hundreds of hours into this game. You're even able to play this one on the cloud through a Samsung TV or a Steam Deck. Hop on PC, instant transition, and then even switch to Xbox. Zero issues at all. It really just feels like the future of gaming with the whole Game Pass and cloud streaming. The thing is, so many of this content just didn't do it for me. NPC interactions were just buggy. Most of the motion capture and faces make them look like weird dolls. There's some funny bugs that happen, but I mean, the system itself, I mean, just the game, it felt really dated. Companions constantly get in the way of your fun, especially because they disapprove of everything. I mean, I would honestly just like to get paid for helping people sometimes. The awesome gun mechanics were ruined by that brain dead AI. The story starts off so slow, there's a lot of people that just don't want to continue after three or four hours, even though honestly, people aren't lying, the game does get better after that. Some faction quest lines are crazy long and they involve so much fast traveling and talking. I mean, speaking of fast traveling, I'll probably get shit on for this, but I mean, I know the game is huge. It's just so easy to get bored when you spend most of your time in a menu. I found myself constantly inventory managing because someone at Bethesda just loves the whole encumbrance thing. Besides that, you pull up your quest, you hit plot course, you hit land, and boom, you've gone solar system to solar system. I'm really torn here because I get that manually traveling would get boring. I'm not asking for that at all. All I'm asking is that I get a chance to just play the game and not spend so much time in my menu. If you walk into a store or even certain parts of the city, I mean, you get a loading screen. Going to your ship, loading screen. Walking over to the cockpit and sitting, active loading screen where your character sits down as slow as possible. Taking off from the planet, loading screen. Going to another solar system, loading screen. Landing on the planet, loading screen. It's just so much and you find yourself bypassing all of this crap by just fast traveling, which really just isn't a fix either. Again, I, I don't mean for this review to be a rant at all. I know people adore the game. I can see the light in it, I, I really can. And when it hooks you, it really does. And you find yourself up till 2 a.m. going, how the hell did this happen? I love that about Bethesda games. And I think if you're a fan of Bethesda titles, you're probably going to like Starfield. I like the way the guns felt and sounded, as well as the shooting mechanics. I mean, I kind of wish there was just a little more variety when it came to guns, but that's something else. 
corporate espionage, the whole double agent quest line, those get really good and they're just awesome space battles in the game. The music is another high note that I didn't mention. I love the atmosphere that they created. The score for the game was just really good. When you first land also on some of these planets and moons, the game looks so fucking good. And as someone who loves the idea of space, it really worked for me. There's a ton of content, a ton of missions, so much customization. The ship builder is such a cool feature. I didn't even mention the whole new digi picking, which is a fun twist on lock picking. I really don't want to compare this to other titles, but so far in a year with nothing but awesome games, this one didn't fully do it for me. Sometimes it felt great, but most of the time it was really just mid. If I had to score Starfield, I think it's a 6 out of 10, but I could definitely see this one eventually becoming a 7, especially now that I'm in that whole unique New Game Plus. Starfield has an interesting twist when it comes to New Game Plus, and I highly recommend that. I don't think the game is average in a 5. I think it's above average, and at times it can be really good. It's packed with content, which is a huge plus, but I feel like most of that content is really shallow. The game unfortunately feels really old in 2023, and I almost wish Bethesda focused on maybe 10, 15 good planets with a lot of things to do versus the whole scale of this game. I also can't knock it being a Game Pass Day 1 title. And honestly, I, I suggest most people just subscribe, pay that 10 or 15 bucks, and try it out. DLC is eventually coming out, and I mean, who knows, maybe some of the flaws can get fixed with patches. It's I know this might be the longest review I've done, and looking back, I really hope I didn't just rant the whole video, but I had to get my thoughts out on this one. I know 6 out of 10 for most means trash. People want nothing but 8s and up for games. But I think this one is worth at least trying and can hopefully get better. I just really hate that it didn't do it for me. Thanks again for stopping by. Help us out, drop a like, hit subscribe so you don't miss another video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.